Today I have the Mercedes GLE facelift for you, including a driving part with Thomas in 4K full screen full length. Let's go with the front with new headlamps, new signature, and then we have the optional multi-beam LED, four dot design right here, wide vehicle in AMG line. Then you have this one horizontal spoke, whereas the base Mercedes GLE has two horizontal spokes. Here the AMG line also comes with this micro star pattern and also a different graphic in the lower side part whereas the base version once again would have a more subtle look. The front indicators here replace the data running light. That looks quite fancy, doesn't it? And in the driving part later on we will compare and drive GLS 450 versus GLE 53. The length at 4 meters 92 or 194 inches has remained the same. Wheels now start bigger, 19 inch up to 22 inch. These here are somewhat in between 21 inch, but already massive enough from the looks. AMG line has the wheel arches and vehicle color, whereas the base line, yo base line, has it in the crossover wheel arches. And typical for GLE is always this design graphic right here. As for suspensions, you start with the base steel suspension, but that one already has adaptive dampers. Optional Airmatic air suspension, we also have it here, and optional, optional. The e-active body control, it can also lean in the corners, so we can go this low rider style and so on. We'll have the normal air suspension for today. The rear with new tail lamps, and when you have the AMG line, then you have this high gloss black in the lower part, and out of fuel, fake exhaust police is reporting another set of fake exhaust. And a quick look at the turning indicators, not that spectacular. And as a comparison, this is the 63 model, 63S, now gets the logo on top of the hood, the AMG logo, and here 53 and 63 get the AMG front grille with the vertical fins. 53 and 63 are different in the lower side part here where the 63 looks a little bit more massive. You can go up to 22 inch. Here you can also see the 22 inch in the AMG styling, really massive. Here also with the optional carbon ceramic brake. And in the rear you have this diffuser style in the central part and the exhaust tips. Yeah, real one is on the inside. The outer fuel fake exhaust police is always watching for you. The fake safe changes also account for the GLE Coupe and it always starts in the AMG line. This is here a 53 model, so it also has a true AMG grille. But these sides here in the lower part, this is the same in AMG line and also in the 53 model. The coupe always, of course, characterized by this falling roof line. It does split opinions. Are you team love or team hate? As for the SUV coupe thing, tell me in the comments. In the US, by the way, the coupe only available as GLE 53 or 63. On the European markets, you have a wider engine choice also for the coupe version. Key fob in matte black and not high gloss black piano like I prefer that way actually. Door closing sound, really solid light and also the panel gaps, well built. Inside of the doors, I prefer these models here from Mercedes where you can still have a haptic feedback at the seat controls and not without the feedback here. Also styling elements you can also find in a GLS for example with this deco element. Also news taken from a GLS, even from the Maybach, is here the galvanized tops here at the air vents on the left side and that goes throughout the vehicle. New steering wheel, looks pretty fancy this the base steering wheel but then has the capacitive BS buttons. So I think I preferred the previous one in that case. With an AMG line or true AMG you also get the two horizontal spokes then at the steering wheel. Dual insulation glass here by the way. Seats here, the animal skin, how do you see it? One, two, three, four, five, six patterns here. The Artico MBTEX has four patterns. Yeah, other than that, it's hard to differentiate. The Artico available in black, gray, and also new brown color updated. 189 or 6 for 2 is the headroom here. It's a good command driving position indeed. GLS and GLE don't differ so much in the front driving position. It's more about the rear differences then. Interior overview, you can see this galvanization here at the design element and also here now at the air vents, so a little bit improved quality. Different decor elements available here. To me, it's a little bit too much high gloss black piano lacquer. I would prefer a matte wood. What would you? To me, always very important that you can still set the climbing tool manually and with a very rich clicking sound. MUX infotainment system update. I think it's quicker than before, just more responsive and Apple CarPlay also wireless. 
course, also Android Auto works. Burmester sound system tries to be, you know, this very true sound, keeping to the original source. I like the sound indeed. And there's then also this new off-road mode available. You have here this off-road view and then also a special off-road camera live feed around that. And as soon as you go forward here, it builds up this past camera image. And there you can see I'm going over this puddle here, for example. So you always see if there's something between the tires to prevent damage. The head-up display is indeed a very impressive one. Look at how large it is, very clear as well. And you also have off-road head-up display, eco, you can have different settings there, a standard one reduced or a sporty head-up display. So much to choose from. And the digital instruments with integrated map from the car internal GPS or map full screen. And my favorite are the new off-road gauges here that just looks coolest from the visualization or once again go classic or with the sporty gauges. Middle console and the front one, you slide this one open, inductive charging pad. The cup holders are not holding the bottles too tight, but you can cool or heat them, that's pretty cool. Then you have here this touch pad where you can use alternatively to the touch screen. So you can also control the infotainment driving mode selection here. And then you have the air suspension, that option you can also lower or raise the vehicle manually. Last but not least, this split armrest. Panoramic roof is really wide and you can also open it completely. Really like also this crystalline look here of the top inside interior lamps. And here we go. Let's go a little bit further. That's it. Rear bench. Actually, the door opens quite wide, so you have easy access and also for child seats and so on. Isofix at the outside parts. The bench is quite short and also falls backward a little bit. That's maybe to me not the best in comfort, also if you compare it to, for example, the BMW X5. But what is better here is the legroom. Because of the design of the rear bench, you have more legroom actually than in some of the competitors. That's actually decent. And the headroom also for tall people, no problem at all. The middle seating here is Surprisingly soft in the middle part for the seating area, just a little bit stiff than here from this back area. And you now also have two USB-C chargers at the rear. The trunk, 825 liters, up to over 2,000 liters. You have here this cover, which doesn't have rails at the side because you can also get a seven-seater for the GLE, but I think it doesn't make any sense more than in the GLS. Here, the width is actually quite good, 110 or 44 inches, and the normal length is about a meter or 40 inches, so that's good. And the total height here is 85 centimeters or 33 inches, very good measurements. To fold the seats, you have to grab over here. Um, it is possible, though. And if you went for the AMG line or have a true AMG model, 5363, then you have the steering wheel here with two horizontal spokes. This is also the one with the microfiber sides, can really recommend it. You can also get different decor elements like the carbon fiber here and also sportier seats, also with some microfiber share at least. But you can also get, depending from market to market, a full Dynamica microfiber on the inside and with the AMG line or the 53 model at least. Rear headroom in the coupe, the panoramic roof is not as long and so it rises here again towards the rear and then you see still enough headroom left indeed. And a quick comparison to the boot or trunk of the coupe, length width more or less the same of course and here the different cover. The difference is that you lose height here in that latter area. In most cases you will be able to live with that. Engine lineup, 2 liter 4 cylinders petrol and diesel, 3 liter 6 cylinder petrol and diesel. 4 liter V8 petrol engine in the 580 or in the 63 model. The 53 model gets also the 3 liter 6 cylinder. To me, the sweet spot is the 3 liter 6 cylinder petrol engine in the GLE 450 indeed. You can also get base engine, for example, in the US with the 350. That one even just with rear wheel drive. News is that all are equipped now with mild hybrid system and plug-in hybrids are also available both petrol and diesel. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Mercedes GLS 450 facelift, 381 horsepower, now mild hybrid system, and 5.6 seconds is the acceleration figure to Marco now, or 62 miles an hour. Air suspension already helps here in city driving to even out some bumps and so on. I wouldn't say that it is a super soft setup. You do feel still it's an air suspension. That's good. Um, 
but it's also not that it's leaning too much in the corners. Very interesting is I found that with an earlier driving test, GLE and GLS, that when you have the E active body control, it's also feeling a little bit stiffer. You know, you have this leaning into the corner possibility then. At the same time, I feel that you lose a little bit of comfort just, you know, from this evening out things. That was quite quick, to 35 miles an hour. Wow, that went well. So this engine here is definitely more than sufficient as for the power. Uh, do you really need an AMG version? Of course, it's a different kind of thing, but for most use cases, this is totally fine as for the acceleration. Here in the corner, you can see, doesn't lean too much from the air suspension, but the seats actually don't hold you that tight. There is also, depending on the market spec, the Dynamica microfiber available. There's like a microfiber on the inside. It exists in the AMG line, if that's available in your market. And this one actually keeps you a little bit tighter in the seat, so I can recommend that. Then now here on the motorway, 65 miles an hour, so around 100 kilometers an hour. Noise insulation is really good, it's very silent in here. We've also seen the dual insulation glass at first. In the sport mode, already when you have the base suspension, the suspension goes a little bit stiffer. Here in the Airmatic air suspension, of course, even more so. And you can go back from the drive mode select to the comfort mode. Then the suspension is evening out. The waves, for example, a little bit softer, a little bit better. You can drive in any mode it will still be fine actually. As for the assistance systems, setting in here on the left side of the steering wheel, there is this active lane keeping assist. See here it's not too proactive. I have to correct myself now. Now it's catching it. There we go. So here now I'm being kept in the lane. Of course, I'll never trust it 100%, for example, when it's a weaker at the side or something, but it can be something to, let's say, relax a little bit more on the motorway. Just keep your hands in the steering wheel and then let the car do like the, the fine nuances and so on. How does it behave in a lane change? It's really nice, very smooth indeed. And steering uh, doesn't have a dead zone area. There is always reaction and it actually feels quite natural. And in agile driving corners, we'll see, is it also sporty fun in the riding? And for the agile driving part here, countryside, I go once again to the sport mode to give as a little bit more feedback from the suspension. Let's see difference here, steering, comfort mode, sport. Yeah, I also get more feedback from the steering. That's actually cool. You could also set an individual mode. For example, if you say suspension soft, but then more feedback from the steering, that would be my tip for today for an individual driving mode, actually. The normal air suspension is a little bit stiffer here. The curve mode in the e-active body control would now lean into the corners, but it's such an expensive option and in the normal driving behavior, I think a normal air suspension setup is cooler actually because it's a little bit softer then. So I would stick either base suspension, go lower budget or then go with the normal air suspension. I feel it's also good control here in the steering when I'm in the corners, don't have to, have to steer that much, that's fine. Also when I, for example, accelerate out of a corner, then you have the rebel bias, even if you have the all-wheel drive. That's also good that you can have some fun actually getting out of the corners right here. So we felt at home on the motorway. In the city, it's not too big. And here also, it's agile enough. It does give you driving fun. And the only thing is here, when you have the slick surface with the seats, they don't offer too much side support. You get used to it, it's okay, but that could be maybe a little bit better. Other than that, it also very well handles this discipline here. The fuel economy, if you have some steady driving, mainly motorway, like 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, you can indeed score some good figures of 9 liters or more kilometers, 26 mbg US, 31 mbg UK. Of course, more going up in the mountain, then it's a little bit worse. And in the US, it will always be a little bit more efficient, like here at this moment. In Europe, you can calculate with a little bit higher consumption because of the OPF, the particle filter for also for the petrol engine, for example. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge. Now with the 53, the GLE 53, also as the coupe, I'll put it in sports plus mode and let's accelerate it out.
whoa, that was like already 40 miles an hour. And it even didn't like, it was like 80% of the pedal. Really nice and how smooth you see in the steering It was like an acceleration out of the corner from standstill. Really nicely done. So a very, very controlled acceleration. Rear wheel bias, of course, with this all wheel drive system here. So you always get out of the corners very well. Difference is, you have the same base engine, so to speak, but here with more horsepower tune, 435 horsepower. And with the facelift, with the electrification, this vehicle profits from it because it has even more power or even more boost. So the 450 at 5.6 seconds, then this one here was at 5.3, but now with the facelift at 5 seconds. So there's now a 0.6 second difference in the acceleration figure. 450 to the 53 motor. So just more boost, more punch then, and also you heard it, just more sound. Of course, the exhaust is different and also in the sound emulation on the interior even more so. You just hear more, something also this blop, blop, blop when you get off the throttle. The air suspension is here also set on a stiffer note. And for the 53 is an option, standard for the 63, you can also get the anti-tilt control of the car just stays more upright so indeed this one feels way better here in tighter corners so you don't you, have, you feel as there would be less g-force applied the seats also hold you tight a little bit more they have also some microfiber share same goes for the steering wheel with microfiber share which gives me just more control over the vehicle so here definitely in the recipe the more <laughs> microfiber you can get the better it is for the sporty driving and indeed i have more fun driving this one here than the 450 in the corners. Of course, there's also a hefty extra price, but it just gives you more sporty feeling being here in this full-size SUV. At least for European taste, it's a full-size <laughs> it's, it's full SUV. So this is here, or these are the roads where the GLE 53 can really play out its advantages. Do you need the V8 for the 63? Not necessarily, this engine is way you know, more than enough power-wise and the 53 is to me also a sweet spot. Remember that in the US you can only get the coupe as 53 or 63, so when you're from the US or North American market, this one would be then the coupe to go for actually. And here also once again, out of the corners, really nice, good control of the steering, very natural and I don't have to steer too much. So having a lot of fun in these corners than here. So this is just a sporty difference and together with the different styling, visualization, also here with the carbon fiber and so on, it feels quite different to the normal GLS 450 indeed. It's just a question, do you desire this sporty driving feeling or would you rather say like, ah, you know, I'm buying the GLS more for the relaxed comfort and so on. Then of course, you might as well just stick with the 450. Both, of course, do a good job overall. Well, and if you want to compare the competitors, the BMW X5, tune in there now, or maybe go for the bigger Mercedes GLS.